San Francisco Asian Art Museum is presenting Beyond Golden Clouds, Five Centuries of Japanese Screens. This special exhibit features 41 spectacular and rarely seen large Japanese screens dating from the 1500s to the present. On loan from the Art Institute of Chicago and the St. Louis Art Museum. The evolution of the folding screen, or byobu, meaning wind wall, is explored, and videos show the visitor how screens are made by contemporary artists. My name is Janice Katz. I'm the Associate Curator for Japanese Art from the Art Institute of Chicago. And now we're standing at the Asian Art Museum of San Francisco in the exhibition of Beyond Golden Clouds, Five Centuries of Japanese Screens. And I'm here uh, in front of a work from the Art Institute's collection uh, entitled Relaxing in the Shade, where we have these two very fashionable modern women sitting on the beach. Uh, in their beach attire with their accessories around them. Uh, this is a work that was done in the early 1930s and it was done for exhibition, one of these large-scale government-sponsored exhibitions in Japan. And the artist was adept at using these very traditional Japanese materials such as um, mineral pigments and uh, especially the, the white on the beach. You see these, the sands on the beach are made up from this white pigment. It's called gofun, which is this uh, white pigment made from ground oyster shells. And so the artist is understanding the different layers that go into a traditional Japanese painting, but his subject matter is very much up to date. These, these two modern women called modangaru, these modern girls who are here relaxing on the beach. They come from very wealthy families. Um, the one that you, that you see on the right, she was actually the artist's student, painting student, and one day she shows up at the studio and she says, well, um, the reason why I'm in my beach clothes is because I'm going to meet my friend um, at, at the beach. And he said, oh, could I come along with you and could I, could I sketch uh, the both of you? And that turned into this work here. And uh, what you might not realize is that the, the gray shape that surrounds them, it's actually the shadow cast by an unseen beach umbrella. And uh, at the time, in the early 1930s, what was very fashionable it was stripes. So you see stripes on their, on their clothing. You also have the stripes on their hat. Um, and if you notice their hair, it is actually permed. It's very expensive to get uh, perms at this time in Japan. So you know that these young ladies are very well off. And there were really only a few places where you could get that done uh, at the time in the screen, 19, 1933. So this is a more contemporary work in the exhibition. This dates to 1990. It's by the artist Okura Jiro, who's uh, from just outside Kyoto. And the work is called Mountain Lake Screen Tachi. Uh, he conceived of this work when he was at a workshop in uh, Virginia, the Mountain Lake Workshop. And it, this was a collaborative piece that he did along with his many students and volunteers who were there in the workshop with him. Uh, it's actually a work um, that's done on wood, and over the wood, the artist painted this uh, red cinnabar pigment and black pigment, and over that, he laid a gold leaf. It is a kind of gold leaf, artificial gold leaf, and uh, also bore these, these holes in the wood, and the wood itself has also been um, carved with, with, an, with an ads. Um, sort of broken into it with an as in order to get uh, this, this kind of uh, varying surface texture. Uh, also the hinges on, on these pieces are very interesting. It's a double hinge. Uh, so this work is actually extremely flexible. You can be set up in a multitude of ways. And this is something that's very much in keeping with the conceptual idea of the artist, which is that screens um, should not uh, be fixed permanently in place. There should not be just one way to appreciate them. This is a work of installation art, uh, it is a sculpture and that can be set up in a multitude of ways. This is a work of the early 1920s by the artist um, uh, Omura Koyo and uh, it's a work of art that he did for 
exhibition. It's actually a subject that he um, decided upon when he was in uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, you, you see these uh, exotic birds and foliage around him. Uh, these type of birds uh, were actually very reclusive, so it seems that he went to a zoo and he saw the birds there and then he decided to do this kind of subject matter. It looks very un-Japanese to have such tropical imagery on screens, uh, but you have to remember that at this time artists were looking for new imagery to bring into the uh, traditional uh, Japanese painting um, methods and materials. Uh, his knowledge of, of these traditional materials is wonderful. Again, he's using the mineral pigments uh, that um, have uh, several uh, hundreds of years of history. Uh, and he's also, he has a gold background, but it's not gold leaf that he's using in the background. It's actually silk that has been backed with gold. And so you see the gold flickering through the weave of the silk. In the back, it's a much more subtle effect than just having sheets of gold leaf laid down. Another work from the late 1960s by the artist Kayama Matazo, and here he has combined the realms of earth and water and sky uh, into this uh, wonderful uh, mixture of forms, shapes, and patterns. On on this single screen here, you've got the currents in the water for for the water element, then you have this crescent moon here. And then for the earth element, you have the bamboo against a gold background. And it's almost like a, a mosaic of uh, different images coming together. It almost looks like a kind of craft that was done uh, in, the, in the 12th century, for the most part, of taking decorative papers and tearing them, and then making a collage out of them. And so the artist is refer referencing that. But here, he kind of does it on a, on a very large scale. He was very knowledgeable of the use of of these uh, pigments such as the silver leaf and the gold leaf. This takes um, quite a few years to, to learn how to do that. Um, and it's a, it's a wonderfully decorative work, a very complex what's going on on the surface. This is a work from the late 1960s by the artist Morita Shiryu. It's actually a calligraphic work. It looks like these wonderful, um, the, these wonderful forms that are flying uh, across the, the dark background. It actually says something. It says, dragon knows dragon, which is kind of a personal motto for the artist, meaning greatness knows greatness. It's a very inspirational phrase for him. It looks like it's done, the letters are done with gold, uh, gold lacquer on black lacquer, but in actuality, it's done with this aluminum-based pigment, which was silver, on black paper, and then uh, covered over with this yellow varnish, which changes that aluminum-based pigment to gold. And then um, also, it, it makes the uh, composition look look shiny and reflective, like um, like Japanese lacquer. Uh, the artist must have used a very, a very large brush in order to get uh, such, such kind of brush strokes here, and it's very dynamic. You can, you could see his hand at work, um, making these characters go across the screen. And of course, he is taking the ideogram for dragon and making it seem like it's an actual dragon that's flying through the air.
Thank you.